things. Today I'm going to talk about a lovely tower defense cooperative board game called Castle Panic. I have loved this game since I first was first introduced to it years ago. Let me show you the box lid. Yay, Castle Panic. It's been popular enough that there are numerous expansions and they've even rethemed the game. Uh, I'm not sure how many times. But this game is designed for one to six players. It's The box says ages 10 and up, but I know I have played this game with nieces and nephews of mine from about age five onward. There is some uh, text on the cards that I have to help them with at that age, but that's about it. It's a co-op card game, or board game. So if, if you're willing to help younger kids, you can walk them through this one and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, it's also, I love, playing co-op games with younger kids because then that competitive streak is more easily managed. <coughs> That's just my thing. So in this game, you have a castle with six towers and six walls sitting in the middle of a, I would say field, except one third of it is basically water, one third of it is volcanic ash, and one third of it is uh, grassland with a uh, forest in the outer ring. The uh, cards are often cards that will let you do a point of damage to somebody in a particular area, whether it's somebody in the grassland area, the um, uh, volcanic ash area, or the watery area, or whether it's in the, um, uh, there's rings, concentric rings, from the forest to the archer to the knight to the swordsman. They're labeled for who can hit them. Nobody can hit them in the forest because they're just too far away. Archers can hit them in the next ring in, then knights, and then swordsmen. Uh, monsters have health of one to three, and it's their triangular pieces, and their health is on the points in these corners, and whatever their current health is, is facing in towards the castle. So um, this orc starts with two health. If I hit him for a point, then he rotates, so he's one health, and the one is actually facing towards the castle. And they will periodically move in, and um, you don't want them getting all the way to the castle if you can avoid it, because they will damage uh, or destroy walls, I should say. They will destroy towers, and if they're healthy enough and they get all the way in, they might destroy the, all the towers. The goal of the game is to defeat all of the baddies before they destroy all six uh, towers of your castle. Gameplay is a pretty straightforward approach. You get uh, cards. Um, in a three to five player game, uh, you're looking at five cards in your hand. There's a very slightly for one to two or for six. There's also the player helper that'll walk you through your steps. So at the beginning of your turn, if you don't have uh, the hand limit in our three player game, five cards you draw up. Then um, I can go, you know, this just isn't a great hand for what I'm facing. Here we're going to move everybody into the archer range because. At the start of the game, you've got one beast in each column. Um, so I'm going to discard a card and draw a different one. Then I'm going to try and do whatever damage I can to the baddies. There's also some resources that let you, let's say a, a monster has destroyed that wall. You can take a brick and a mortar, play them together, and you can rebuild a wall. Towers cannot be rebuilt, but walls can. Otherwise, let's see, I've got a red hero, so that means somebody in the red range, the uh, volcanic ash range, gets to take a point of damage. I hit the troll for a point. That card's now played. Um, nobody's in the knight ring yet. Nobody's in the swordsman ring yet. Ooh, I can tar somebody. That troll is really big and nasty. There's a few, very few extra tokens here. One of them is tar, two of them is... Uh, extra strength or fortification for a wall. Whoops. So I have tarred him, and you know, I forgot the step of, of trading cards. So if, if I were actually paying attention to the player aid, I would have drawn up, I could discard a card to draw a replacement just once, that's optional. I can trade a card with somebody else at the table. Let's say I have um, a brick I'm going to trade away, and I'm going to get the blue hero from this player instead. 
Then I would play my cards, like the, the tarring and doing the damage. Oh, and the blue hero. Let's just get rid of that goblin. He is gone and out of the game. Then monsters move. So all the monsters that are still on the board move forward one ring, except if they're tarred. But the tar is then done, because tar is only so effective. And then we would draw two new monsters from the bed. And let me just point out, they actually decorated the bag with a monster's face. I think that's a lovely touch. So we would draw two tokens out and add them one at a time to the board. So the first one, we take the single die that's uh, included in the game. It's a five. That tells us we put it in the forest ring of number five at its max health. And then, oh, the next one, some of the tiles have special text instead of monsters. All players discard one card. So that means all of us would have to discard something. So I would discard my knight, he would discard his swordsman, he would discard a knight, and there we go. Actually, no, he discarded the brick I gave him, because there are no damage balls yet. And then that one would be out of the game, and then the next player goes. It's a pretty straightforward, routine process. The way you're helping other people on their turns is by trading a card to them, if you've got something that would be really useful on their turn. Um, and uh, it can get pretty hairy in there sometimes because some of these tiles with special text will have things like, draw three extra monsters. <clears throat> There's also um, special monster tokens. They're specified, the text of them is in the rule book. It's also on one corner of the board. And boss monster tokens, there's three of those. They're also described in the rulebook and on this corner of the board. So you just follow the instructions. They include one of them's a healer, so everybody on the board, all the other monsters heal a point up to their full health. Um, or they move an extra space forward, or you pull out, after the, that boss monster's played, you pull out more tiles. It's that kind of thing. Um, nothing too complex or crazy, but it can make for a really harrowing time defending your castle. Um, the board is a good saw. They've got lovely sandies that, that uh, really make you kind of immerse into this whole, this is my castle and I've got to keep it standing. The cards are uh, nice, glossy, uh, uh, what do you call it, durable. Um, so the components are good. Uh, again, it's not something that will really pack down small. It's a good size board, but it's a fun one to play with a wide range of ages. It's not difficult to learn. It takes, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes to play. Um, this thing probably says, actually. For me, I think of it as about a half hour game. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Again, Castle Cannon. Hey,